and of course, if if that was supposed to be the grand scale of that um, integrity in which was to safeguard the maturity of such business or activity in this planet, apart from that in which you can do for yourself, you can actually do nothing and it makes you wonder what you're actually born for. It's not to discredit or discourage people, none the least. I mean, again, life is sort of like a, a primeval sacrilege, isn't it? Well, they'll take away your entitlements and think that you're actually not entitled to be able to talk about God and even build the civilized world on a premise of God and the stars and the heavens above like Egyptologists. But then only every time in history, every time, right now as we speak, not just the Egypts, of course the Western world, all these powerful people, you know what they do? They only tell us about their kings and their queens, they tell us about their royal families, they tell us about the corporate heads, the president and the first lady, they tell us about couples or families. They don't tell us about their God. They don't tell, they, they don't talk about you. Supposedly you became just a fucking statistic that was somewhat of a mistake because like being mistaken for who you are, of course you don't know who you are. And nobody actually knows. So who do you think you are? You just could be some parasite or an absolute code, a genetic code of bacteria learning how to survive in this pocket of the universe and put a little capsule like an experiment, like a project in which to understand this pocket of the universe and to understand like the dinosaurs, like anything before us, all the, all the oceanic life and everything on the surface, fauna and, and, and flora and all that, it all has life to it. And most fleshly life has that, the same theme constantly from the creator, whatever creator, eyes, nose, mouth, ears, five holes punched into your head and slow fed oxygen to understand the life rate of what you might see as paras you're a parasite. You're a surface mite, aren't you? You're down here with all the dust and the grass and the filth and the shit, aren't you? Life is so difficult for you that even a pile of shit or a tree stands taller than you. And like a bacterial sort of, bacteria, they deteriorate shit and they destroy shit. Are you not doing that? Is it not something to do with being able to understand anything verifiable in this pocket of the universe that has very much experienced so much peace and environmental subtlety, you wonder why you've actually had such a free, willing engagement with this place and yet found yourself overriding it willfully, damaging it, like on a highway policy, that's like popularity card. You're on the highway with everyone, <clears throat> like a tunnel of love. It's your way or the highway, so you just get on the highway and then like that tunnel of love, like the highway to hell, even when you were wrong via the massive statistics, so many people going down the wrong corridor and failing to meet the foundation which lives by the rock, right? lives by the fortified strength of its own means and purpose, and not by the wayside in which fears you off into an obscurity. If you were looking for the, hi uh, the highway, not wanting to stay on it, you'd be looking for a shortcut. And yet, in the beginning, before it all unfolded, if it was the shortcut and it was the way, then it would have just been the way. And what is the way? The way is to decimate productivity rates that override the system of notoriety. Because apart from yourselves, you can do nothing. And if you had any real power, you would have your problem solved, which means to find a common means, a common agreement, something that we all accept in. People try to find a crutch. People try to find a ritual. People try to find some common means or some common grounds in which people to talk about. So the world somehow just sort of plummets them into submission. 
where the image in which you create for yourself will either cause you to carry yourself to the heights of success or plummet you to the depths of defeat. And so, at what stage does it become a prerequisite <clears throat> to your determinate lifestyle? Be it democratic, be it self-determinate practice. You are not just so much in control of your own affairs. They call government like the government are trying to father and mother and parent your children, when in fact government should be what's happening in each and every individual household. Ministry equals parenthood. And yet they will take it away from you because like the school systems being the great mediator for our society, in which we actually as families pay the system in which to be that great mediator for children, just like the schools and the thousands that attend high school spill out to become the thousands that correlate and shape our community and our society society from generations to come. So you know them by the standard of schools and you know what you're paying for and every time you seem to sort of cash in like a concept in which supposedly you had subject notoriety and you had full control and access to in which to achieve it via every number in which you gave birth to, you don't have to get, I guess, you, you, you know, get, get a blowjob or, or, or your dick sucked in this world. It's just all around you, everywhere. You give birth to it, everywhere. It's, it's just all over you. Sexism is like the most offensive sort of, you know, sort of, you know, psychology in the world. It outdoes everything. Sex, sexist people are the most offensive people in the world. It covers everything from race, gender, criminal activity, everything. It, 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 pen it, it, it takes away your privacy. It ta it's, it's a breach on human contract. It might as well be the same way in which the world safely, but in a very highly sophisticated manner and mannerhood, trains and in a preparatory sense, preparatory sense, trains your children to be super observant and super concentrated on sexual conduct. Sexual conductivity. It doesn't convey itself through the way in which we ought to be conducting ourselves in the workplace and at school and at home and in society, not even in public toilets <laughs> or, you know, just a backdoor job. You, you've made and you've duped out, you've induced the public to find that common grounds of, of conversation or that common grounds of ritual in which like a universal language that may not necessarily be there from any one point in history to another, as the generations and the, the decades and the centuries move on in a much more, much more voracious, volatile world where it's constantly trying to clinch power and hold on to it and to fortify it to that means of familiarity so that people do get it and they sort of somehow advance and re redefine you know the excellencies and the specialties in which produce much more I guess stable and secure society <clears throat> you have in fact plotted or that word plight, it's a bit like blight, but like blight, can a blight? Well then, like plight, you've plighted against the people, like you say plotted, but plighted, where it's a bit like marriage, but at the same time it brings death to you. <laughs> so, you know, or it just destroys the outcome. Because it was such a thin line of obscurity, such a thin line of obscurity that like that language, it's a lot like that, that thin line between people you can't relate to and that you can't actually conversate or communicate to. And sex industry seems to bloody bridge universal country people of many tongues and cultures. They don't have to speak a word, you can just shut up and not even do that fellatio thing and just fuck for money and fuck for industry and actually have some kind of congressional pathway in which puts it into, I guess, a balancing act as, as shaky and as volatile as it can be. Um, to make it look like you're, you're, you know, you're, you're fortifying means and purposes or that you're, you're, you're stabilizing 
the world and putting it into that sort of that clinch mechanism where I guess it you know it um as a reverent or as as reverent as it always must be especially to each and every sort of na nation and nation would intonation like nation has a lot to do with I guess um you know those the, the, the senses or, or the sensories or, and sensitive but then like sounds and and what we relay relayed concept or, or relay just relaying information right the the tailored pitch or pitching a, a bloody a, a tone atonement for sins even you know you have um, you've plighted those imaginations and, and you've put much more of a bug bearing effect between people who have not substantiated their claim on each other and very much just somehow deteriorated and dissolved that basis or that foundation that should have always been there at some point in which to I guess work alongside and build and become much more integral it's, I guess, to have a sound favor and a sound impartation and sound grace readily available at all times. So that regardless of what you cannot achieve and obtain, because like the compulsory bargaining skills and prospective trade mechanisms that, that bring people, you know, abundance in, a, in addition to life, um, you have to somehow do the best with what you got and a lot of the times it's just about having nothing it's about being able to just simply go without as to, as to be satisfied but then also filled and be healthy and prosperous and all that and more but never take for granted what it is to have an intimate slash imminent affair or responsibility at your greater control which just like the children just like your people just like the prejudices and the powers in which govern the realm, just like the conductivity, or should I say even further, the conveyance of, 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 of life. Like an administration, like you just, you know, you pass a lot, it's packaged, it's there. Well, why would people actually contribute only to become much more of an exploitation and a distribution from a point that they were never actually fit to do so. I guess that's why you would fuck yourselves and fuck each other through an industry that doesn't even have a binding communication. You sort of fuck and become some sort of a, a lag or a lacklustered approach even, where it, it does in fact fail to, to fortify the means and the strength of civil liberty and civil society, you know, um, to, you know, perpetuate, you'll look at everything as a provocation where you have to instigate and you people will be super observant and concentrating in such areas and of industry and scientific analysis and yet you wouldn't even be able to identify for the life of you like a pulse or an impulse mechanism and you just had it laced with karma it happened right underneath your pulse it wasn't even found compounded on your daily outlook or that daily input it would never suffice the level of output because you, it just ain't about you the moment you start failing to adjudicate the process like failing to use or utilize denominations like every human individual like every viable systems trait and industry and every goddamn car that you can pull on people like an option for families to invest in and spend on, right? You become much more um, fragile in, 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 in mental stability and as detrimental as time always is, time is the greatest indicator and at what cost do people start elaborating those fears to the point where like a self-driven interest and going without and finding a greater way in which to be more willing to do for you what people cannot do for you. You know, do for your country what you can't do for yourself. Or, you know, do, do you know what I mean? Or what, do for your country what your country can't do for you. What your country cannot do. Your country cannot guarantee 
the best possible education for your children every time you put them in school. Your country cannot guarantee strong economic management. Your government cannot guarantee, your people cannot guarantee a one-size-fits-all legislation that starts and exists within the family home, not every time you roll up to an office at two o'clock in the afternoon because they don't hand out applications at four o'clock in the afternoon. What it is to be able to, I guess, stand as a, <clears throat> as a, as a, as a, as a, as a highly manipulative slash vulnerable slash gullible life form in the face of whatever maker be so godly fearing and in fear of one another that even in the face of your own opponents take your own people for a sick joke and do it by jumping on a foreign bandwagon or an industrial bandwagon and, and, and find it so amusing but only be faced with it through the humility that steers you towards war and complete reprobation and total annihilation militarily, physically, nothing is ever too late spiritually but that spiritual discernment like the story of creation has to be able to highlight the perfect indication as to where of course you take people for a, a, a joke like, like the wayside or the rock to be able to take what you've got and do the best with what you've got. If people understood that, do for yourself what your country can't do for you, then like conscientious objection and that being the greatest inconvenient truth that Al Gore could ever not, who could ever fail to pick up on while he sells that movie for dollars and cents and shit, you know, conscientious objection where you're too busy trying to tell people a story rather than perfectly distribute to them that lecture that they should have had you'll find that the lecture is the one thing like a free world, a democratic free speaking world find more deadly and dangerous to their political outcome than any strain of poisonous material that infects the bloodline and affects the community to destroy and rob the entire environmental outlay in which to fall back on as a form of disrepute every time the indemnity is brought before not just the law courts and, and the people the Justice Department, but every head in which the broadcasting agencies send out to the, the air and into our living rooms and our family home. Because it's like the way in which the children bring it back from school. If the parents weren't somehow in line or in tune with that, and school was 24-7 for kids, people say they can't do nothing for themselves. You don't have any time. But you'll work a 38-hour week, and if you had eight hours sleep a goddamn day, in a 24-7, 168-hour week existence. You got almost double free time than you do work time and you're the first people to say you don't know how, you can't get anything done for yourself. And you go ahead and blame it on sleep. The kind of people that'll show up to a seven mile drive through at McDonald's as a 47 year old school principal, the female, the mum, the 53 year old university lecturer, the hubby, and the three teenagers in the back, three budding little superstars, a 19 year old Derek's, you know, uh, he's a he's an information technology, he's working in information technology. You got a 17 year old, you know, um, Buford, who's, you know, he's a soccer player, he loves his soccer, and then the 16 year old Lachlan, who's 60, he's a soccer player too. And yet, you'll, go, you'll be at McDonald's as that family, on the kind of money you are, probably still paying off a mortgage and you'll spend 60 bucks on McDonald's, that's 6,000 cents. Don't make dollars, it don't make sense. One dollar is a hundred cents. But then you didn't realize somehow, like, you know, you didn't realize that you just asked teenagers to make your adult ass dinner. It's the same even in the big, powerful, robust sales, rep sales marketing companies where, you know, the, the big bloody 40, mid 40s bloody marketing expert is on a multi-million dollar package every year. He's walking around the, in the streets looking like a cool dude and he's, you know, he's, he's got $180 tires or $300 tires and he's just so up himself with, you know, he's, he's something that keeps his ass up like a fucking pedestal everywhere he walks. He's so cool, but then he'll be the ones just like his, his, his sidekicks and his managers and his supervisory staff and all of his close associates and colleagues at McDonald's too. 
and at KFC constantly asking teenagers to make your adult ass dinner. And then you might say because you're robbed of the time, you don't have time, that's bullshit. If you're a family like that in the drive through 47 year old female school principal, 53 year old you know, male university lecturer, and three teenagers in the back, 19, 17 and 16 boys, fit boys, and you say you don't have any time to make dinner, but you just went through a drive through paid 60 bucks to ask for some teenagers, somebody else's kids, to make your adult ass dinner, then why don't you actually get your, your teenagers to make you dinner? You wonder why their rooms are so dirty and filthy. It's the one part of the house you can't get them to do anything. You're babying them. You've sort of given in. The schools allowed it to work there. You know, the schools just did that. You weren't, you know, it wasn't about 24 seven education. What's that? You'd rather ask somebody else's teenage kids to make your adult ass dinner, Mr. University Lecturer, Mr. School Principal, and get, you know, a beef sandwich with cheese and tomato sauce and some what do you call it, fries and that's it, rather than ask your budding little adults, your 19, 17, 16 year old boys, fit boys to make you dinner, what because you don't trust them, what because you just love throwing and wasting the world's money, what because you didn't pick up on the concept, what because they're not out of the home yet because like you know you didn't give them the money or something, I don't know, or they weren't there or they're not, they're not capable yet, what's the go, well what's up with that? I mean, like, as, as much as cheeseburgers cost, even in Australian dollars, Maine burgers, if every goddamn Maine burger sold at McDonald's across the 95,000 restaurants worldwide, was calculated in Australian dollars. And you know restaurants sell more than 100 Maine burgers a day, not to mention all the other excess crap and whatever. Then that's quite a, a, a hectic amount of money. It's like saying it's almost like that's where the world's major money has been, like McDonald's would be one of the 10th richest bloody co corporations in the world. Maybe, but then it's like, well, wouldn't governments and society be so much richer and so much together, power of unity, if you just ran the whole country like a cheeseburger factory? You could do the math in Australian dollars, it's absolutely hideous, to the point where they got enough money to be able to fund the entire nation's hospital systems alone and yet they've only got a plastic box out the front of the counter after you pay that hideous, ridiculous amount of Australian dollars for McDonald's food. And it's called a Martyr Children's Ronald McDonald House, Ronald McDonald's House Fund for Sick Kids. And they'll say, oh, you know, can you, after you pay all that money, they'll say, oh, can you please give us some money so that we can help sick kids in hospital? Like apart from the money and the profit revenue they raise, they only seem to somehow just they expect more money out of you to help somebody else's kids rather than your own who should be on their own two feet or have every dollar within your within your greater investment doing the best with what you got to ensure that they they can stand on their own two feet or get a job or don't get sick or have more attention to themselves and understanding yourself it, it was never designed that way it was only ever designed like a system to stand in between you what you got and what powers can do to take it, though, pick, it, pick, it pick at you like snakes and strike at you like a pit full of snakes. Right, where why would the homeowner bypass you as a tenant and give a weekly salary to a real estate for managing your rental goods, or your rental payments? The real estates always make a weekly payment every week. Why would the owner actually bypass you and give the real estate like a, a reward? Who the fuck stands between you and all your entitlements and takes from you and ultimately determines your outcome? You're not even entitled to the bond at the end. You'll pay four years worth of rent at $70,000 in total. You're not even entitled to your $1,200 bond money, four weeks bond. At what stage do you give someone 216 weeks worth of rent and you're not entitled to four weeks if it means peace I, peace I give you, peace I leave with you? And at what, what reward after 12 months worth of premium payments give back 10% as a real reward? It's a real reward, it's not there. Well, this is again, why, why would the system be out there forcing you and your families to buy into it? Because you don't have anything. This concept, notoriety, scheme of life, in short, is what's called conspiracy, spiraling, 
a spiraling affair. We're not down because you are so far up yourself. You're not down. You're just not so down and you're just not so penitent and remorseful. You don't have any amendments. You don't even rectify everything every step of the way and discern it. Some countries don't actually have amendments, like they haven't put it in concrete because they're too busy trying to solve at some stage what it is to lay out some and then further capitalise and, and, and show provision for that so that it can keep their percentages intact and run you to the friggin' ground like a bunch of recycled products through whatever industry and, and translucent affair that you call your life that, you know, didn't have to go home as if that was all you were doing in this world. To be homeless is like unheard of. But like that title and like that special badge, your job security is so important to you, especially in times like war, that it actually breaks your judgment. You can subliminally nod your head and far to win put anything, but you know you've got the mortgage to pay. You got the duds and the socks and the whole fucking system and the scheme of your life in which you work in the industry could be so corrupt. But even you don't even have the sensibility or the protagonism in which to change or even, you know, to, to, to be to be what you are, I suppose, what you were employed to do, to be super fit with a specialty or an expertise in which to promote and build and capitalise on. You wonder why the world falls into fascism so quickly. When capitalism falls, politically, fascism kicks into gear. But all fascism is, is a cover-up of what is poverty. It's important to know what poverty is. Because poverty is power. Power actually creates the poverty line and people are paid dirt cheap in order to stay there. Now let's look at what it actually means, I guess, to be poverish. <clears throat> and it's very important because I'm sure it would it, it would depict, I guess, you know, the, the cruxial dependency of what people ought to think what poverty is. We know what embezzlement is. Embezzlement is the second biggest trade industry in the world apart from pharmaceuticals, which is drugs. Embezzlement where in 20th century scale <clears throat> of racketeering and network rackets was like money. Of course, money is so famous to what is known as the embezzlements, embezzlement rackets or embezzlement industries, movements, embezzlement activity. But then humans, humans are the new form of currency when it comes to embezzlement like live or dead animal stock. Same thing, human trafficking, asylum seeking, they are, they're the scum of the earth. And so, poverty, here we go. This should pretty much be almost similar, if not synchronized with what exactly fascism is. But of course, whatever capitalism was, when it was perfectly looking so strong, and so above us, that we're not down with it, poverty. The state of having little or no money or resources except for the basic needs. The state of voluntarily giving up personal possessions and income as a certain religious order. Oh. The state of voluntarily giving up personal possessions and income as a certain religious order. Is that fascism? Who's to stand between you and your entitlements? Why would they be at war? Well, it's not your war, but then to give it up for whose war? makes you wonder why the fuck they're at war. They're at war because their concept sucks severely. It's like, you know, the fuck do you need somebody else's ammunition to fight your war? Why would you get into it in the first place? Well, it's like your name ain't Earth. This, ain't pl this planet ain't Earth. The planet has a real name. It should be up there with Lyra and Vega in the star chart. What actually you know, gives you a perfect description as to what your name is should be what's more readily, you know, subtitled or, you know, um, you know, it substitutes what your greatest industry in this world is. Or like the rate of, the rate of industry. Death. Poverty. You might be mistaken that the number one cause of death in this world is, is diarrhea. 
So if diarrhea is at the heart and the core and the forefront of human survival, if you don't eat, you don't shit, if you don't shit, you die or something, then your name isn't Earth. Earth was like a project gone wrong. You are pellagra. What is pellagra? Pellagra is like diarrhea. It's a vitamin B deficiency and all that sort of shit. So like Lyra, like Vega in the, in the astro astronomical star chart, your name is Pellagra. And you very are much Pellagra. That's why it concentrates so much on sexism and fashion. It keeps you dollied up and looking pretty and all that, but no, nothing. You might say eating is one of your top three favourite things to do. Duh. Again, you might be duped to believe that forbidden fruit tastes sweeter. When it's very hard to eat diarrhea with a fork, rub it off a wall, or accept abortion on toast. <laughs>